Well, hi everyone, this is Bob the Science Guy, and today we have episode three of my critique of Flatsoid's response to my challenge. As you may recall, I did challenge Flatsoid and his posse to come up with a scientifically valid observation or experiment that would be able to differentiate between a flat Earth and a spherical Earth. Now, so far we've got two 10-minute episodes, and we've only managed to get through one minute of my four-and-a-half-minute challenge. These guys do need to focus a little bit better. Now we're going to circle back to Sav's original challenge and see the spin that they're going to try and put on that, claiming it has something to do with celestial navigation and their misunderstandings thereof. So uh, basically, I want to lay it down something right quick. Uh, didn't Sav's challenge just basically cover what celestial navigation is? You get three different points on the Earth and show me convexity. Basically, that, that was it. Yes, he did. That was the challenge. Yeah. Bob is in your court. You know, you don't need a horizon to use a sexton, too. So, <laughs> Wally literally, literally shows a sextant using a horizon. Now, a couple of years ago, I demonstrated the use of a sextant, and I took a noon site using several different methods. I used a marine sextant, and I used what's called a bubble sextant. Now, the thing about the marine sextant is that normally you would use the horizon as one of your points of reference. You'd use the horizon and then the bottom limb of the sun. However, in my situation, I don't have a clear line of sight to the horizon to my south, so I can't do that. So I had to use a technique called an indirect sight of the sun using what's called an artificial horizon. Now, an artificial horizon, which you can see right here, is just basically a shallow pan of water in a box to block it from the wind. And what you do is you, you sight the sun against the reflection of the sun in the water. This is a very typical technique for obtaining a sextant reading on land where you don't have a sight of the horizon. But that's a rather advanced navigation technique that requires an understanding of the use of a sextant and a knowledge of celestial navigation. So these guys are pretty much over their head with that. They seem to think that it's funny to mock what they don't understand, yet there it is right there. If you would like to see how a noon sight is done with a sextant, and all the math involved with it, I'll go ahead and put a link to the Noon Sight video in the description of this one. Again, this is a very typical Flat Earth technique to laugh and mock at what they don't understand, which apparently is quite a bit. Now, here are the criteria for the observation. First, okay, of, okay. First of all, he demands we must do an observation. Now he wants to give us criteria for an observation as well. <laughs> all right. Um, let, let's just make it, let's just find out what is an observation, guys something you look at <laughs> you just look at it and you observe that it's happened like the sunrise thing i did in on holiday Aye. the globe made a claim i said okay i observe it doesn't fit what your claim is that's it that's an observation now they wonder why i required certain criteria for any observation or experiment that came up with it's because they don't understand the basic premise of science and how experiments and scientific observations are designed case in point Let's listen to them talk about the final experiment in Antarctica and what I believe to be the sundial that they built down there. Let's see what they have to say about it, and you judge whether or not they understand the very basic premise of what they were doing. Oh, flat. So they didn't do an observation, did they? They did something else that wasn't an observation, because if they did an observation, the sun wouldn't be doing what they claim it were doing. So they must have been doing something else. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of weird stuff. But yeah, they don't. They never get past observation. They don't even know what observation is, to be honest. Yeah. Well, with regards to the fake experiment, Look. they got their observation before they even went and made their observation. Mm -hmm. Because yep. the lack of understanding of basic words, or basic phrases, and they have been, they have been brainwashed in a certain way, so you can't have a, a good house. Uh, built without the good fundaments. Well, this is one of those moments you have to just kind of sit back a little bit and unpack things. First of all, Sleeping Warrior came on and did a little bit of word salad, word game, uh, trying to debate the meaning of the word observation. And then he came out with a true gem of Flat Earth scholarship. They couldn't have used the globe map or else they wouldn't have been able to predict what they saw in Antarctica as they did. Okay, how do you know that? Uh, they used globe map to predict things in Antarctica. 
those predictions turned out to be true. Your argument is, well, since they did turn out to be true, they couldn't have used globe math for it. Good Lord. Then Flatsoid came on again saying, oh, well, there were just a lot of strange things that happened down there, a lot of, a lot of weird stuff. Okay, whatever that means. It's kind of a general poisoning of the well. Now we had some guy with slurred speech come on and say, basically, they seem to have made their observations in advance of going down to Antarctica. How can you possibly do an observation before you get there? Well, again, there's a couple of things here. First of all, he doesn't understand what they were even doing. Uh, you know, they were going to set up a sundial, for example. They calculated the angles to the sun and the length of the shadows in advance to help set that thing up using globe math, okay? And when they set it up in Antarctica, guess what? It worked. That's a confirming piece of evidence to the globe. But more importantly, this is what's called a straw man. Uh, he is making the argument that the globe claims they made the observations before they even got there using math. That's not what happened. That was not the argument that the globe was making. The argument the globe was making is if Earth a globe, we should be able to predict azimuth and shadow length on a sundial. We did predict azimuth and shadow length with a sundial. Therefore, that supports the idea of a globe. Why does it not prove that it's a globe? Because that would be an affirming the consequent fallacy and deductive reasoning. We're not using deductive reasoning here. We're using inductive reasoning. So in other words, this bit of evidence, which was predicted by the globe, occurred that is supporting evidence that the globe model is correct. It doesn't prove it. A similar argument, which is a valid argument, is something called modus tollens. If the Earth is flat, there will be no 24-hour sun in Antarctica. There is a 24-hour sun in Antarctica. Therefore, the Earth is not flat. Then, of course, they finished up with a little bit more wordplay. But let's go on to the next section. They conflate science with astronomy. Uh, and astronomy is based on observations, correct? So basically what they're doing is they're going to make observations and they go, oh, we predict that. They, they add that into that, try to add it to it into the scientific realm. That's not a prediction at all. Uh, no. You have to have a cause and effect relationship. You got to be able to vary. You got to manipulate the cause. Yeah. yeah. The, the, In the astronomy, there's only observation. There's no cause manipulation. Now I'm going to go ahead and finish up this section with this little gem that they just put out. Astronomy is not science. Now this is a very classic flat earth technique. So basically what they did was they redefined science and said that according to our definition of science, astronomy doesn't qualify as a science. You know, it becomes the Pluto of science. Pardon the pun. But they have a very fundamental lack of understanding of what astronomy even is. They seem to think that it's a guy sitting out in his backyard looking through a telescope at the moon. That's not what astronomy is. Astronomy is a physics degree. I know that because I'm an astrophysics major. There's a reason the word physics is there. There's a reason that I have to take differential equations. Very little of professional astronomy right now is in the visual range. It's mostly in infrared or ultraviolet or in the radio frequencies, as I track asteroids and comets. What we do is we monitor the position of an asteroid and a comet and how it changes in respect to time. And then using Kepler and Newton, we determine a set of six orbital elements that describes that orbit very, very precisely. Now this leads to another common misconception in the science denial community, and that is that the independent variable is the cause of an effect. Now, when I look at orbits, I measure the right ascension and the declination of an asteroid, for example, and I do that throughout the night. The independent variable is the time of the observation and the position data. And I can use the time of the position data as the independent variable to calculate the orbit. So again, even though time is the independent variable, it's not the cause of the orbit. The cause of the orbit is Kepler and Newton. So this is Bob the Science Guy uh, signing out from Northern Michigan. Make sure you hit me a like and subscribe. A lot of you people are watching these videos, but you're not subscribers to the channel. Go ahead and hit the button. Doesn't cost you anything. And of course, I do have the telescope fund in the description. And if you want to have a look at that, maybe support that effort for Shamrock Banks Observatory, it would be much appreciated. Take care, everyone.